Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Gary Lipsky. Thanks for being on the show again, Gary. Uh, thanks for having me. I, uh, I listen to it all the time. Uh, thank you very much, Gary. I appreciate that. And it was great to see you just a, a couple of weeks ago in Denver uh, at a big conference there. And uh, a little about Gary, I would encourage you to go back and listen to show number WS254. It came out July the 2nd of last year. And Gary talked about a lot about his background and his expertise and a couple of deals that, that we discussed. And we'll, I think we'll briefly discuss those a little bit now. And we're going to talk about what's happened since then and where Gary's at now. Uh, it's just incredible steps that he's taken. And, but uh, briefly, 17 million uh, all, uh, assets under management and over 1,500 units as a passive investor. Started investing in 2002 and runs four meetups. That, that's a full-time job right there, Gary. <laughs> as 30 years of operational experience as a lifelong entrepreneur. So, Gary, thank you again for being on the show. Why don't you give the listeners uh, and myself just a, a brief update about those deals that we discussed in the last show, and then let's jump right into what happened with those deals and kind of you know scaling and moving on from there. Yeah, yeah. So we bought a 42 unit in Tucson in May of 2019. Uh, we purchased that for 1.7 million and uh, 39,000 $39, a door. Um, and at the time, you know, obviously it was, uh, was a really good deal. We, we should have bought a lot more at that price. So, um, I mean, we've just been hitting the business plan the whole way. We have a great team in place, which makes our lives easier. Um, and, um, we just put it on the market, uh, a week ago for 72,000 a door. Uh, so, you know, um, huge opportunity for our investors. Um, so it's less than a year, less than a year. Yeah. Less than a year. It wasn't in our, you know, it wasn't in our business plan to sell it back that, that quickly. Um, but, uh, rent, uh, the market rents in Tucson are, are the top in the nation, you know, over 8%. And, um, you know, we, we, we had a really good business plan. We, we fixed the exteriors, the doors were, were, um, sliding doors. We changed those and really nice paint. And, um, we added a, a dog park area. You know, we did the best that we can, oh, oh, uh, uh, had a, a barbecue area and, and lots of people stayed quite honestly, we increased rents almost 50% and they were staying because it was so under market. Um, so that really helped boost our NOI and uh, it just makes sense, you know, based on velocity of money to, um, to, to look to exit this property and not, not refinance, you know? So, you know, we talked to our investors and, and we had been from, from, from early on meeting with our, um, our property manager and our broker and talking about where we are, what we need to do. And just constantly checking in and, and implemented a really nice plan. And, you know, that put us in, in position. Did you all have to uh, use, uh, you know, all, all the capital expenditures, everything you all had planned to spend for upgrades and things like that? No, no. Uh, so I think we had about 300000 in in, in uh, CapEx and we spent about 180. Now, certainly, you know, you, you build a lot of extra for the HVAC and whatnot that, will break uh, down over time. But uh, yeah, we haven't had to uh, do as many renovations. And um, so we, you know, that, that just goes right back to our investors too, which is, which is nice, if, you know, assuming we sell on everything. Otherwise so it's contingency. Tell me about like making that decision. Uh, so like, was that like, okay, we, we've, we've made, you know, a specific return for investors or, or I mean, how, what was the, the tipping point for saying, okay, we are going to pursue selling. Well, you know, so it starts with your, your NOI and looking at it on a month to month basis and knowing, and we keep raising rents and we're like, whoa, we're really on track for like, this keeps going like year five. So, you know, we called the broker and he met us on the property with our, our third party property manager and kind of walked, walked the units and um, talked about, okay, so if, if we stay on track, what do we need to do 
you know, what's the, you know, what's the best plan? And so what we did was we started implementing a premium uh, level uh, to show investors um, or, or future buyers that there's some different levels that you can go to and this is the income that you can get to. Um, so then, you know, we, 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 we figured out what, what the return would be for the investors if we sold it at, you know, certain prices. And, you know, we built that an Excel spreadsheet and, you know, we're looking at, you know, 60 to 70 plus, you know, return on, on this. And so we reached out to them and said, Hey, obviously we're going to have a prepayment penalty. Um, but is this something you'd be interested in? And, and we can either 1031 into another deal if everything aligned right or take advantage of cost segregation and bonus depreciation where it's going to wipe out your, your tax liability anyway. And, you know, I mean, 95% of the people, I believe we were like on board and said, Hey, let's, let's do this. So, um, so yeah, so we, uh, put together a plan, put it on the market and we've gotten some great feedback so far. Nice. So tell me about that process a little bit of how you reached out to your investors. I mean, cause I mean, you could have just made the decision, right? But it's nice that you, you know, you reached out and you kind of took a poll, but you know, what was that process like? And, and then tell us a little bit about the feedback. Yeah. So we're, I mean, we're a hundred percent transparent with our investors and engage with them for any major decision. Um, it's not, it's not like they, they can vote on every single thing we do, but we want to engage with them and want to keep them abreast. We, we send out monthly reports that are super detailed because whether, you know, a lot of them don't even read it quite honestly, but for the ones that do, there's all the information they need to, to stay on top of what's going on. Um, so we, you know, first put a teaser out in, in our monthly newsletter and say, Hey, this is something we're thinking about more information to come. And then we sent, I think it was like a three page letter, basically going through all the scenario, what it means for them as an investor, um, potential ranges of money that, um, you know, return on their investment and then a line for them to sign to vote if they'd want to are in favor of selling it. And if they were in favor of joining in on a 1031 and um, you know, we got, we got feedback right away. And then we, we have a quarterly uh, zoom call as well. So we, we went over some of that uh, as well. And so, and um, you know, if anyone had questions, they'd call us, but pretty much everyone said, Hey, no, it sounds good. Let's, let's, let's do this. Nice. So you mentioned you have a quarterly zoom call with investors. So you do updates that way as well. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll always do our, our monthly newsletter, but we'll do a quarterly zoom call. Um, this way it gives them a forum to ask questions and we'll go through the same stuff, but it's just another uh, touch point that we have. Um, yeah. It's recorded too. So I could, you know, if, if people can't make it and uh, you know, we could send it out to them and they can watch on, you know, on their own time. No, I like that. It gives them an option to interact with you and see your face again and know you're real and, uh, you know, you're, you're really somebody operating this investment. Uh, and so, you know, that, that's through zoom, right? And so does everybody just on there kind of like in a group, a group call or. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. uh, uh, yeah, we'll have, you know, a good percentage of the people on the call and they can, you know, we'll go through, um, you know, our key points and then any questions, uh, that they have, we'll, we'll, you know, free to answer in front of, you know, in front of everyone. Uh, nice. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's not a huge turnout on, on the Zoom call. Everyone uh, is very confident in, uh, in what we've been doing. But um, yeah, it's just, it's just another touch point, you know? Okay. So, so let's, you know, let's talk about, you know, scaling up from that property or even selling that property. Or are there any, any difficulties or anything you've experienced or learned from selling that property right now or, or any property, but for that matter, but specifically that property, then, you know, what we're doing to, to scale and move forward? Yeah. Um, you know, it's just been the normal process so far. No, no, nothing crazy yet. You know, we haven't gone full cycle yet. So maybe uh, I'll have some lessons after we do that. But it's just good communication between our property manager and um, and our, our broker, quite honestly. And I mean, given the situation we're in now with coronavirus, I mean, they've, they've communicated and set an expectation saying that, hey, we're not going to be doing any property tours right now. So things obviously are going to be uh, a little quiet. We do have some interested buyers, uh, but we'll just take this day by day, week by week and, and see how it plays out. We're not under the gun to sell it. So uh, we'll just, 
we'll just monitor the situation and go from there. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I'd love to talk a little more about the coronavirus stuff a little bit in a minute and what you, you know, how, how that's affecting your all's business, but, but you all also have a, a deal you were best and final on. Is that right? Yeah. So uh, today we were on, on a deal for a best and final. Um, we still love the property. It, again, it's in Tucson. So we have a great team in place and, you know, so we're not, we're not starting from scratch. So we know confidently we've got, given the situation that we can go in and, 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 and do well. But what, what we did is, you know, we looked at the T3 and, and so they're at 85% economic uh, occupancy. So what we did, we, we, we have it down to 73% in year one. Um, so we, we increased the loss to lease, we increased the vacancy, we increased the concessions. So really conservative underwriting. Um, and then and that goes forward for other years too. So we were, we're operating at a loss, even uh, in the first year, not a loss for the property, but a loss from their, from their, uh, their T2, T12 and T3. Um, what we do have uh, as well, that we've added you know, a lot more working capital uh, so that you know, we're, we're completely covered there. And um, what else did we do? Oh, well, freeze, freeze rents. We're not going to increase the rents, even though it's uh, about $120 per unit under, under market. I mean, and we can, you know, assuming we get the deal and, and everything moves forward smoothly, we'll continue to monitor that. Um, but for now, we, we can freeze it. If there's room to go, going forward, then, then we'll, we'll take advantage of that, but huge opportunity. Um, obviously, um, offices right now are, are, are the leasing offices, they're, they're closing offices right now, but you can communicate via email or phone and, um, they're only doing major repairs. They're just not going out and fixing, you know, right. Changing a light bulb or, or little things like that. So, you know, things are, things are, will be, you know, quiet when you take over property during this time. But, uh, right. you know, and you build into your, into your contract that um, you got to have a financing contingency. Now, you know, during this hot period in the past, you really couldn't put in a fin financing contingency. You also have to build in um, uh, some contingency because of the, the coronavirus. I forget exactly what it's called. It's like, um, um, Material adverse effect is th those are the the key words, um, and so you build that in as well. And if every you know, if all of the potential buyers are putting that in the contract, then it shouldn't be an issue. If if someone's willing to do uh, to to have a contract without it, then maybe that buyer is going to go with them. But I wouldn't I wouldn't do it at this point because you just you just don't know, and you have to be you have to build in. Um, safeguards during the, these times because you just don't know what's going to happen. And then you got to protect your investors money. For sure. For sure. So what was that, was that for the one that you're on best and final or the 42 unit? Is that how it's being operated? I know you said like people, the office staff are, are, are not on site. Right. Oh, now. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to, um, our property management team will, will not necessarily be on site all the time or, or they'll have the offices closed. Um, going going forward for the for the time period yeah <laughs> no it's all right i was just trying to keep it straight yeah, yeah any other ways that like you know the the coronavirus specifically has affected the way you all are operating that that maybe you didn't mention yeah yeah absolutely so we were just on a call with our, our property managers today and then we have with our regional managers we have another call tomorrow and um but it's as as of up to today, it's been pretty, you know, business as usual. Uh, but now it's really going to be focused on phone and email and not having that uh, as much interaction with the, uh, with the tenants, quite honestly. And they'll build in some leniency with our, our tenants going forward, people on month to month, um, late fees, stuff like that. Cause we want, we want to keep the cash flow coming. We want to keep them having a, a safe place to live. So you've got to be, you've got to be lenient and work with, work with your tenants. Yeah. It, you know, talking about being lenient, uh, you know, what's, what do you all see, you know, ex causing the biggest issues for your all's daily operations or cash flow? Uh, you know, I guess, you know, considering the coronavirus specifically. 
Yeah, and, and, and quite honestly, it hasn't affected us yet, but it, it will affect us when people are getting hours cut or potentially losing their jobs sure. um, in the next month or so. Um, really hasn't been much of an effect right now, but we definitely foresee it. And, uh, you know, and there, there is going to be some government programs, churches helping out and whatnot. So certainly we'll, we'll direct our tenants to that, to those resources and, and, and help them out as best as we can. You know, if someone's been paying, you know, on time for many, many months, you're going to work with them and you want, you want these people, um, and provide for them because you're not, you're not going to have tons of people coming to your door saying, Oh, I want to, I want to rent now. So we actually stopped all of our, our renovations going forward and, and holding on to that cash. And because price is, is really important at, at this stage uh, of the game. So you want to, you know, once things start you know, picking up again, then you can continue on with your renovation plan. But right now just, just hold off, conserve your cash and, uh, just keep keep tenants in there paying. Any recommendations for someone who's you know who's in this right now? They're managing properties and and they're thinking, okay, okay, you know, I need to conserve cash, just like Gary just said. You know, which is great advice. <laughs> I could not agree more. What about you know postponing distributions to investors? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's a conversation we're going to have to have. Uh, our, our actually our next distribution or our, our first distribution for this property will be in April, but yeah, we're going to have that conversation and saying, Hey, um, it'll, it'll crew. Um, but it may be prudent to, to hold on to that just as we, you know, to ride out this, uh, this rough spot. Cause uh, you know, in, in a few months from now, hopefully we can look back and say, Hey, it was just, just a blip, you know, but you know, we'll, we'll see. Um, you know, I've been through, you know, 2008, I've been through many other crises before and you just, you got to just take a deep breath. You get, read all of the information, you know, there's going to be optimists, there's going to be pessimists and work with your team and be transparent and gather, as you know, all the information and make a, make a, make a good decision from there, you know, and be able to pivot, you know, that, and I think that applies not just to, you know, asset managing, but to, to anything, you know. Is there a, a specific amount of cash reserves that or a way that you all figure that? I mean, most people don't really have a, a great way of saying this is how much I want, but we want enough, right? You know, yeah. but is there a way that you all like are going to figure that to say, okay, this is enough? Yeah. So, um, I mean, you want to be able to cover four months of your, uh, of your, uh, your debt service without any income, you know, and that, that gives you plenty of buffer. You're going to, you're going to get income. I mean, if you're at 95%, you know, economic occupancy, you know, it's not going to drastically dip. I mean, even, you know, I've got these data from, from Tucson at the very lowest point in Tucson, they had a 12% uh, vacancy rate, you know? So, you know, it doesn't, depending upon what market you're in, um, you know, you, you look at historicals to help predict, you know, the future and you look at the worst case, you know, the statistics. Nice. All right, Gary, anything else about the coronavirus that you'd like to add before we move on to a few final questions? Um, or how it's affected, you know, what you yeah, all are doing? I think, you know, just be, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, you know, you just gotta, you gotta work with people. You know, every, everyone's in it and getting squeezed, the hourly workers, your tenants, your staff, and be patient and, um, you know, be, be human, you know, be, be kind, <laughs> be, be great, be graceful, you know? Yeah. So Gary, is there a way that we haven't talked about that you've recently improved your business that we could apply to ours? Yeah. So we've been scaling up. So um, you know, we went from the $1.7 million property to uh, 15.15 and, and um, you know, it's just it's building our investor database and that's, you know, the four meetups that you said. And, and quite honestly, it's, it's, you know, I have a, a partner uh, on those meetups, so it just helps. Um, I have a business partner as well. So what we're doing is we're both not doing the same thing and just able to leverage our, our skill sets, our time. Uh, making us a lot more efficient so that we can do more deals that make sense 
and and have more time to talk to our investors and and everything else that we need to do to to grow and, and scale and we've been hiring some people as well to you know some part-time some vas which i know you got you do a, a great job with and just you know the more people that we can have on our team uh the more that we can concentrate on the things that we do best love it so having a partner splitting up the roles that way you can be more focused right and on what you're good at, what you like to do and, and, and be more productive. Ultimately uh, it's, it's awesome. And, and what about, uh, you mentioned uh, you're doing the meetups now. You're talking about growing your data database of investors. What's the best way you're doing that now? Well, definitely, definitely the meetups. You know, we have a good amount that come every time, but we always get new people coming in and whether we're getting them that way or, or at conferences, um, uh, even on social media, I don't have a, a huge presence, but I'm on there somewhat consistently. And, you know, when you go to different places, they're like, oh, I, I've heard of you. And, let, and, and that's a, it's a great way to start, you know, to meeting other people, whether I go up to them or they come up to me and say, I know you, but I don't know you, you know, <laughs> Through, just because of social media. I mean, it's just a, such a small uh, community of investors and syndicators. So that's really helped. Are there four meetups uh, local to you? So three are in LA um, and one is in Phoenix. So we're, I'm based in LA, but we, um, Kyle Mitch and I are, are in Phoenix all the time, looking at deals, looking at our own property. So we just said, hey, while we're out there, every fourth Wednesday, we're gonna have a meetup out there. And we've been averaging about 25 people every time. So it's- Nice. It's, what, how far is that for you to travel? To Phoenix, it's uh, about an hour flight, or if we drive, it'll be five hours. So. Uh, not too bad. And uh, obviously we love, we love that market. Nice. Nice. All right. Uh, and tell us again, Gary, the one thing that's contributed to your success. Uh, I guess putting myself out there uh, is the most important thing. Um, meetups, um, go, you know, be on other people's podcasts, going to conferences, putting yourself out there and, and having, letting people see your passion for what you do. And that's really led to uh, exponential growth. And how do you give back? I have a nonprofit that I'm, uh, I, I founded in 2006 called Core Educational Services. And we provide services for at-risk youth in the Southern California area. Gary, thank you again for your time and just sharing your expertise and experience on the show with the listeners and myself. I know I learned a lot. And I know they did too. Uh, tell them how they can get in touch with you. Yeah, you can reach me at Gary at breakofdaycapital.com or go on my website, breakofdaycapital.com, and we have a free passive investors guide and connect with me on social media. I love talking real estate. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital making a difference one investor and one child at a time connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success